Welcome to this video on confidence intervals. In this video, we will just answer one question, which is how does the confidence level affect the width of the confidence interval? Suppose one summer you are working at a carnival and your job is to guess a person's age. You have to guess their correct age within two years. That means your margin of error is two years. If you fail, then the person gets a prize. So let's draw a picture of the confidence interval. So your guess is the point estimate in the middle of your confidence interval. The lower limit of your confidence interval is whatever your guess is minus two years, and the upper limit of your confidence interval is your guess plus two years. So let's suppose that you guess the person's age is 24. That means if the person is between 22 and 26 years old, that they do not get a prize because you are correct within two years. However, if the person is younger than 22 or older than 26, then that person will win a prize. Halfway through the summer, new management takes over and decides that you're giving away too many prizes. So they change the rules. In order to have you give away fewer prizes, should they increase or decrease the size of your confidence interval? Pause this video, write down your guess, and then unpause it and keep watching. If you said that they need to increase the size of their confidence interval, you were correct. So what they do is they give you now an eight year window. So your guess, plus or minus four years, is now considered correct. So let's suppose, once again, you guess that the person's age is 24. Now, they might be as young as 20 or as old as 28. Again, you now have an eight-year window of success so that if you're within four years, again, either in either direction, they will not get a prize. Notice that this is a larger window of success than you had before. Now the person only gets a prize if they happen to be younger than 20 or older than 28. Hopefully you can see from this example that the likelihood of you being correct is increased because we have increased the size of the confidence interval. So what do confidence levels do? As we work with confidence intervals, we will see different confidence levels. The most common ones are 90, 95, and 99%. Increasing the confidence level means that we have to increase our margin of error. This means we increase the distance between our lower and upper limits, and therefore we increase the overall size of our confidence interval. So think about this. Which of these three options will have the widest confidence interval? A 90% confidence level, a 95% confidence level, or a 99% confidence level? Pause the video, write down your guess, and then unpause the video and see if you are correct. The answer is a 99% confidence level. Again, in order to increase our confidence of capturing the true population proportion or the true population mean, we have to increase the size of our net. That's why I made the background of the slide, slide a person who is fishing with a net. So literally, the bigger your net, the more fish you are likely to catch. So think about a confidence interval as sort of a one-dimensional net. The wider we make our confidence interval, the more numbers we can catch or capture with our confidence interval. So what does our confidence level actually tell us? What is the difference between a 90%, a 95%, or a 99% confidence level? This figure to the right shows that some of our confidence intervals capture the true proportion or the true population proportion, while others do not. So let's look over here. For example, hopefully you can see this confidence interval here is not touching the green line. The green line represents the true population proportion. Most of these confidence intervals cross the population proportion at some point, but this one and this one do not. If we keep going, we also see that this, um, this confidence interval also does not touch or 
encapsulate the true population proportion, the green line. So our confidence is in the process of constructing the interval, not in any single interval. Therefore, if we use a 95% confidence level, this means we expect 95% of the confidence intervals to contain the true parameter that they are estimating. 